forever. <laughs> Dog. Welcome to another episode of Best Show Bests, the greatest hits of the best show with me, your host, Tom Sharpling. If you like what you hear, make sure you join us every Tuesday night on Twitch at 6 p.m. Pacific for a brand new episode of The Best Show featuring callers, celebrity guests, live music, and plenty of surprises. Enjoy! Like, like what? Well, in my experience, sometimes if you're, like, very honest with cops, they don't mm-hmm. know what to do with it, and they just will give you a warning. Like, <laughs> I've been pulled over a couple times. Mm-hmm. Like, I once made, like, a crazy illegal YouTube, and I, mm-hmm. I wasn't drunk or about to have a woman do yeah. things to me. Yeah. But I made a crazy illegal U-turn in front of a cop and he immediately pulled me over and he was like, do you know why I'm pulling you over? And I was like, yeah, that was so stupid. I don't know why I'm so stupid. I just, pu- I saw you and I still did it. And then he was like, um, yeah. just don't do that. Yeah, that was I've, great. I've done that level of just, it's like perverse because you're just, humbling yourself so much to this guy yeah. who all you're doing is just please just don't write that thing and then if he starts writing it's just like you no <laughs> like then it's just like you're the trash that I knew you were the whole time I did get a $300 jaywalking ticket oh yeah I was just gonna say about that jaywalking you you cannot talk yeah, them out of that crazy. thing you gotta where was that like uh, like around the corner from my place and he, I, I jaywalked, and then um, I, I was kept walking, and then he pulled up beside me, and whoop whoop, I was walking. <laughs> I was like, "What is that?" Did that happened to me too. Broad daylight. Where am I? What? That's the Hollywood I know. And uh, love. Do you love that? Why? Why do they do it? Yeah. I mean, I guess they're money. trying to save us money from, you know, scraping us off the asphalt. Or no, I think they just want money. That could be. He also seemed kind of like a muscle maker grill type cop. <laughs> like he was ready to throw down. Cuz I uh there had just been a shooting nearby and I was like, "Well, it's cool that you're doing this and not uh you know, doing Stop. anything about these shootings." And then like I I could tell he was like, "Say one more thing. I'm going to slam your face into this car." <laughs> but you just have to that smile. Yeah. <laughs> that one time I I was driving down a hill and I like ran a red light and then the cop pulled me over and I was this is I just gotten my license and then the cop I did exactly what you did and the cop was like like what's going on here are you drunk and I was like I was like no I'm, I was going down the hill I was so scared <laughs> that I thought it was the light was changing and I just panicked and I just went through the light I was, I was so sorry like just instantly I was so sorry I'm so scared <laughs> yeah like why am I I'm sorry why am I <laughs> Sorry, and then and then you're just like, then you're driving that street and you just see a cop on his phone, just like that's the that's when it's like should be citizens arrest mm-hmm. time, right? We just would you ever have the guts to to even say anything like to a cop? Hey, why don't you get off your yes, phone? Yes, one hundred percent. You would, yeah. But wow. I've been I've been eating at Muscle Maker. Grills. <laughs> oh, so that's what's doing it. Yeah, it's the, I'm just like empowered. It's the whole Muscle Maker thing is kind of wiring you up a little bit here. You're. Uh, you're feeling your 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 oats. Well, they wouldn't have oats at Muscle Maker Grill. See, that's the thing. That's that's is it carbs, right? Oats. It's yeah. bad. It's bad. Oats Whatever is it bad. Is. Yeah. That's, Don't touch it. I tattooed poison. that on my my Oats. stomach. Oats yeah. is bad. Oats are you're, poison. <laughs> you're feeling your broiled chicken, right? Mm. They it must have the menu probably just says. I picture it just saying like written in like. Like like a the way like a weightlifter would just write on a chalkboard, broiled chicken, and then like whatever. What else could they eat there? What else? Green like like salad, <laughs> like broiled chicken over, like broiled chicken wrap. No, um, no wraps. No wraps. No but wraps. that would be maybe in the, the sinfully delicious category. Just broiled chicken. Wrap would be wrapped in jerky. <laughs> broiled chicken wrapped in yes. So no, yeah, no wraps. Chicken with a chicken shake. Yeah, ch- yeah, chicken, chicken whey, creatine shake. <laughs> How is this place not in LA yet? <laughs> yeah. This sounds perfect. Muscle Maker Grill and the logo. It, the logo makes it look like a place that's gonna go out of business. You just see it. It's this, it's this oval that just says Muscle Maker. You're just like. Yeah, that and it, they've been around for a few years. They've hung on. So I look, maybe they're thriving. They don't want they girls. Should be here. They should be like Starbucks in LA. Yeah, 
just yeah. a muscle maker grill on every corner. Yeah, what would the, if a barista is works at Starbucks? What would a <laughs> that would be like? A, like are they wearing weightlifting belts there? Uh, I'm gonna just show you. Here you go. That's the logo. <laughs> it's like when yeah, you see that. It's made on uh, Microsoft Paint. The founder's yes. kid made it. Yeah. yeah. Muscle Maker Grill. This logo's not tough looking they, enough. They like grabbed a nerd by his neck and was like, make a logo <laughs> yeah. on this yeah. iPhone real yeah. quick. Hey, make a. Yeah, get in. The, yeah, get on your computer, nerd. I don't know why I'm doing a Jamie Gum voice. I mean, they <laughs> like, did make the letters look like they're made metal, out of metal, yes. which is pretty tough. Yeah. It looks so it just like it looks like you could potentially like lift lift that le- logo. The lift letters. That logo. <laughs> if they explain yeah, that that would be the ultimate expansion for it where they just like you're just like you do the you lift the the words muscle maker grill like it's like each one is like a different weight and you go around the thing until and you get to that second L. Like you're lifting both L's of the grill at the same time. <laughs> and then it's in an oval so that you know it's a family restaurant. <laughs> I, bring no, I brought the kids. Nothing says He-Man Woman Haters Club more like than, that logo. Yeah, more than... Have you ever seen that them. clip of that like jacked kid? He's like seven Which years one? old. Which one? He's He's got like a weird syndrome where he like... like his, He's just like... He looks... Little Jack. Hercules, or Little something? Hercules. Yeah. Yes, I have that. Or whatever. Could be. He could be named anything. Or whatever. Yeah. Little Hercules. I think is it. <laughs> no way to know what his name was. Yeah, I've never definitely never looked that up, but it's probably probably not Little Hercules. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see. Oh, here's what happened. Some dip munch wired this motherboard to the eighth level of hell, and now it's all screwed up. Hey, what is? Oh my God! There's somebody under the table. Who did this? Oh, sir. Yeah. What are, what are you doing down there? I'm fixing the board down here. You're fixing the board? Yeah. Why? So you're an engineer here? Yeah. You look familiar. <laughs> you kind of look familiar, too. So let me get up here. Okay. Ugh. You're right, buddy? Yeah. I was down there for four hours. <laughs> you were down there the whole time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you heard the show start and everything, and you just... Yeah, I mean, I I had my Walkman on for a little bit. I was... Uh-huh. Let me put these, oh, these, these cans on, yeah. Uh-huh. I was listening to Winger down there. You're, so you don't even listen to the shows going on in I here. heard you talking about some cool restaurant just now. <laughs> a muscle maker grill? Yeah, see, I want to I go to that. What is that? Well, I'll, I'll, I can tell you about it. I can tell you about the menu at it. But, yeah, it's a chain. It's a chain for, for people looking to get ripped, I, oh. I guess. Well, as you can tell, I'm already ripped. Uh-huh. Right? Well. Where do I know you from? Well, I used to do a show in... At WFMU. The high school radio station. Well, I did work high... on that board there. That's right, yes. Is your name? It's Carl. Carl. Yeah. 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 I remember you were under the console yeah. when I was interviewing, was I interviewing Sanjaya? Oh, my God. And you were there. I was there. I remember you. You were Lisa Jane Percy. You were there I when Carl you. was From there. From KISS, Yes. So remember Big you. fan. Well, you were not. She was not in Kiss. Sure she actually, was. she was not actually in Kiss. She's still in Kiss. <laughs> no, she's. You look just like one of the Kiss people. Well, that's a terrible thing to say. No, but they were makeup are... and they look great. I'm crying. Oh, now. oh they look great. Okay, they well, do. you do. Tommy think they Thayer. Look great. You look like Tommy Thayer, yeah. the guy who replaced. He's gorgeous. Ace. He's a good looking guy. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> fair enough. Here are some things from the menu at Muscle Maker Grill from the lighter side category: Champion Pasta. Grilled chicken breast and turkey meatballs with reduced fat mozzarella and marinara over whole wheat penne pasta. That does not sound particularly... <laughs> this sounds like some fraudulent... <laughs> yeah, sure, it's for weightlifters. <laughs> it's like, like just some guy never lifted a thing in his life. Yeah, I don't know. This place is bombing. What if we just make it, try to bring those idiots from the gym in across the street? Let's call it muscle maker thing. Maybe it will just change the name. The Muscle Maker Caesar Salad has zero carb dressing on it. The Lean and Mean Cheeseburger Salad. <laughs> lean and mean. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's just food meant to get these guys pumped. Like, you're going to get lean and mean? 
Yeah, I'm going to get lean and mean with the cheeseburger salad. <laughs> it's just, there's nothing healthy about this place at all, except the names. Premium beef burger atop atop. Romaine lettuce with reduced fat cheddar cheese. So this is not. And fat-free hickory barbecue dressing garnished with tomatoes and scallions. They have rat. They do have wraps. They have about 12 wraps. <laughs> this place has no commitment I wonder if the weightlifting community is just like, this place is a scam. You're re- you're taking advantage of us. Us, the meat-headed, right? The meat-headed rise up. They all go into a muscle maker grow and start smashing everything up. So, Carl. Yeah. It's a, you you, you want to eat at Muscle Maker Grill? I do. I want to invest in it too. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think that you might be going the wrong direction. Like with that. like I invested in your podcast. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. I, w- I want my money back. It didn't happen, did it? Wait, you didn't get your the money. The million back? dollar podcast. Yeah, how much did you invest? Twenty thousand. Oh man. Yeah. You should have gotten that back. Well, I didn't. So I'm. So you. Because Joe Mandy had a podcast, yeah. a, a proposal for a it. Was like, it was a yeah. Kickstarter. It was called the Million Dollar Podcast, where you're just like, if I raise a million dollars, I'll start a podcast. And you were just even, you sounded so disinterested in it, even in the proposal. Yeah, I think I said, uh, I'll talk to guests or something. Yeah, yeah. It was just, you were, you were already like walking away from (laughs) it. (laughs) And how much did it raise? So it raised 20,000. 30,000. I got got around 30,000. So 20 was from you. Yeah. And you were, you believed Please don't ask me how I got the 20,000. Okay. I have to ask though. You can't throw something like that out and not expect uh, some sort of, it's like, it's like chum. It's like throwing chum in the, in the water. I was selling something that wasn't actually what I said it was. And what, what were you selling? I said I was selling these diamond-encrusted sweatpants. Diamond-encrusted yeah. sweatpants? You know, for the for the high-end workout people. Okay. Yeah. They work out in diamond? Oh, yeah. Cr- uh-huh. It, it wasn't diamonds. So what were they? Glass. <laughs> so you made And seven. they cut people. <laughs> cut. And you were, you, you had one pair for 20000 or Oh, Oh, so you sold, sold a lot. You sold. How yeah. much were you selling them for? Like hundred bucks a, a pair. And you sold twenty two, twenty thousand dollars worth. So yeah. you sold two hundred pairs I of did. these sweatpants. Yes. Well, that is just insane. Well, maybe you're insane. Well, Carl, I'm not nuts about the cut of your jib here. Well, you're 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 being a little aggressive. Well, I have a question for for you, Dirty D. What was the grape Santini really like? Tasty, flavorful. Was he? Because yeah. you were in the Great Santini. No, it's the Grape Santini. The Grape? No, it's the Great. No, it's not. The movie, the it's Robert the... Duvall movie. Yeah, the Grape Santini. No, it's called the Great. No, Santini. Y- thank you. No, it's the Grape Santini. The Grape Santini was the father of the Grape Ape, that cartoon, isn't it? No, you. I you're think very. I think you're spending too much time under these boards. No. You might get. Are there fumes under there? You need to spend more time under the boards. I don't even know what that means. Well, Is that figure how it, it out yourself? How's that an insult? You'll find out. You mean like I'm not? You don't know what's down there. Uh huh. Yeah. So, you, so you, like I'm like a, a piker here, not knowing my own equipment. Exactly. And I do remember why I had to fix the board at WFMU. Why is that? There was fudge. Smeared into the no, faders. Stop there it. Was it had no, that had nothing to do with some me. ape had been smearing fu- like chunks of fudge. It looked like it had been going on for thirteen years. That's you are trying to get to me. You know that that's not true. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Don't yeah, know. you don't. You hey, don't. You're into music, right? Yeah, yeah. I love music. Can you help me with something? Sure. What's that? I've been trying for weeks to find this BG song. Mm-hmm. And I can't find it on iTunes. I'm nearly positive it's on Live at Last. Okay. H- how does it go? Oh, something like, Oh, girl, how could I ever forget you, bitch, when I pay you 14 Gs a month in alimony? That was so. You think it was from a live I BG I think it's like album. one of those studio tracks on the live record. Like, like the like fourth Like your band side. Kiss did. Well, you mean on like double... Double point, like a live two, a live two, yeah, where the fourth side was live track. I exactly. know uh, was studio track. Yeah, they call that breaking the fourth side in music. That's wow. That's uh, you're you're really inside on this I terminology. Know lots of things. Uh huh. Yeah. 
You know a lot about a lot. I do. Yeah. So I don't know what Bee Gees. Does that Bee Gees song sound familiar? You guys? No. Any of you guys? I mean, it sounds like a Trey song song or something. Trey song song. My, I don't know. Who's she? Uh, uh, Trey songs is a. It's a he. Oh. But, oh. Can I have one of these cookies? Sure. What oh. my thoughts going to be? What, what did you? Think? I thought it was going to be chocolate chip. Uh huh. Wait, isn't it? It's not. Those are not chocolate chip. It's like a Moravian uh, festive cookie. <laughs> you have one of those? A Moravian festive yeah. cookie? No. Yeah. What? What? what like? It tastes like this. Okay, it tastes like I guess Spice, I could taste. It tastes like a little bit of a spice to it, uh -huh. like a chai latte. Have you ever had one of those? So it's like a cookie version of a, a chai latte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please, by all means, you who knows so much about microphones, by all means, chew more into that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the air, are we? Yeah, well, we're not, but we're pre-recording oh, this. Okay. So I, I could just dub this out. You can dub it out. No, we're not dubbing it out. I'm not going to go back and dub okay. you out. Well, don't yell at me. Okay. Well, I want to ask another question. Right, well, you guys go and have your show. Uh, what's the most, well, most embarrassing celebrity uh, thing you've said to a celebrity? Gabe? Most embarrassing thing that I've said to a celebrity? Yes. I really should have planned ahead for this one. First uh, one that comes to mind. First one that comes to mind. I. This is not a... This I didn't. This is not a spoken. I stared down a celebrity very hard one time to the point where they had to look away, and it was because I did not uh -huh. have my glasses on. Okay. So, and I was walking towards this couple, and the, look, this says a lot more about me than it does about this celebrity. But I was walking towards this couple pushing a stroller, and the woman looked very beautiful from afar, but I also she also looked like she had an expensive haircut. And me, being like a normal human being, was like, I'm just going to stare at her until I can figure out if she's actually beautiful or if she if it's just nice hair. Mm -hmm. And then she got very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and she looked away and I was like, oh, no, she's very beautiful. So then I started staring at the guy because I was like, what's his deal? And he was very handsome. And then it was uh, Heath Ledger and Michelle Williams. So you spooked. It was like I, a, they, I mm. made them very uncomfortable. It's like a two and their for child. one. Yeah. That's like a that's like the the daily double. Yeah, right? I got two of them. Yeah, Lisa Jane Persky. I do have one of those. What which did is, you? I said? Um, we're related. You're related. That's what I said to a celebrity. We're related. <laughs> I, which I to this day I never said it. Which celebrity are you related to? Um, Lauren Bacall. You said to Lauren Bacall, we're related. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Carrie Fisher made me. Okay. She made me do it. She made me follow her out into a hallway. Mm hmm And um, Lauren Bacall was with two, like, dancers mm -hmm. that were dressed, like, in top hat and tails and everything, like, one on either side, like uh -huh. they were going to do a show. Yeah. And, um... And Carrie said, you have to tell her, you have to tell her, go out there and push me out there. And then we're standing there and I'm thinking, I don't really know if I want to do that. And the elevator's door, doors open and they get in like mm -hmm. they're doing a show. And I get in too. And, and I say... So you did this in an elevator. <laughs> yes. Who would say insane things to famous people in elevators? I find that to be just... Inconceivable <laughs> Wait. that you anyone would do that. So you're maybe we have that in common. So you're in the elevator. Wait, did you do that once? Um, yeah, I just did it in <laughs> January. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. And yeah. I'm already very hot. You uh -huh. know, my face is all red, and I say <clears throat> <laughs> we're related. And then what did she do? And uh, nothing. No, there's nothing. And then I go on because I'm really nervous, and I say, "Yeah, your father and my grandfather used to get together." All all the time. And she says, I hated my father. <laughs> Just like that. Wow. That's terrifying. <laughs> it was so scary. Yeah. And now you're just, did you even press a floor to get off? I wanted to get off so badly. Yeah. And then, so she, they got off the ground floor. Mm hmm. And then, um, and then I w continued down to the basement and got locked in the basement mm -hmm. for an hour. You got locked in the basement just to avoid the No, situ because you couldn't. It was one of those basements that you couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. elevators that you needed a key to. Sure. And I, so I was stuck down there until I could find someone to, because all the doors were locked down there. And, mm -hmm. 
So you got stuck <laughs> as, as, a as a capper to this. Special help. You got stuck down in, in the thing for an for an hour. Is it still weird at family barbecues, or are you guys cool now? Have you worked <laughs> <Yeah>. out? <laughs> we fortunately never saw one another again. How about you, Carl? Any uh, any embarrassing encounters with celebrities? What's the like worst thing you said? Nothing, nothing on my end. But I'll tell you what. There's been this story going around on the internet for like a month now, mm-hmm. and it's because there's all these memes about it and stuff. Oh no! This, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This Neanderthal uh-huh. <laughs> corners Patty Smith in, in an elevator somewhere, yeah. uh-huh. and he just starts asking her about Humble Pie. The band Humble Pie. Yeah, like if Humble Pie was any good, and that. she apparently just shoved him out of the elevator, and he flew down like three stories. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So he went into the shaft of the elevator. She shafted him. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, well... Carl, I was that person. Wait, what? Yeah. What? Held to like a barbershop. Or yeah, something. that was barbershop quartet style. That was like the... Was the golden chord. The golden chord, but but not <laughs> even remotely musical. What? Yeah, that was me. I, I encountered Patti Smith on an elevator. Oh, no. And I asked her... Back in the day, did you ever see Humble Pie? And then she said, that's a little before my time, which is not true, by the way. The timetable really time does not track at all. She was just saying anything she could right. for that conversation and then she shoved to you. cease. She did not oh, shove she didn't me. shove you. I got off the elevator, or she did. I can't even remember at this point. <laughs> one of those things one where of, you're, it's so traumatic that you just don't know what's happening. One of us got away from the other right, one of us. Sure. I know I wanted to get away from her. I would. I know even more than that. She wanted to get away from me. Did not go my way. Happens like that Some, sometimes. Yeah, you you lose sometimes. You roll those dice. You roll them dice. Yeah, you gambler. Oh yeah. You like what's your what's your game? Pitching pennies. <laughs> Pitching. Yeah. That's your. That's how you you gamble. Mm-hmm. Like. Like what, trying to get him to like lean against the wall? Yeah, yeah, me and some kids in an alley. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. But so it's not very high stakes. Though. Oh no, no. I'm lucky if I if if I if I win like thirty four cents. So you're I mean, not it's the feel of winning. It's nice. So I might just tell you though, next time somebody says, Are you are you a big gambler? Mm-hmm. You might want to say, Not really. Well, compared to the children <laughs> I play with, I am. Sure. I'm the tallest one there. Okay. Well then you are a pretty <laughs> well, you're gambling against children. Yeah. Do their parents know this is going on? Oh, God, no. Uh-huh. No. How do these little pitching pennies games get together? They're my nephews. So you're, you're, oh, this is, it's even smaller than what it's you were saying. It's pretty small, yeah. Yeah. I, I lied about that amount of money, too. Yeah. yeah it's like 14 cents. <laughs> so you, you, yeah, you were, so even 34 cents was you trying to, like, be like a big shot. Total big, big daddy, daddy Warbucks kind uh-huh. of guy. Yeah. But you're With just the spats. Uh huh. You wear spats? I've never worn spats. It's fun. You got to wear them. Has least, anybody here ever worn spats? Spats. Ever? Yeah. spats. No. Joe Mandy, worst uh, thing you've said to a celebrity? I um, I think I was I uh snuck into the Billboard Music Awards last year and like <laughs> got face to face with uh. Uh, Mark Cuban and Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, and it was yeah. like a dream come true. And then I got pictures with both of them, mm-hmm. and then I had like a moment with uh, Mark Cuban, and then decided to like pitch him an idea, <laughs> which I'm sure he gets a lot, which is like already so obnoxious, but it wasn't an idea for a business, it was like a spin off of Shark Tank. And uh, he was like kind of into it, and then I got greedy, and then just started pitching a business idea that I have that's like truly pornographic in nature. Yeah, I'm and a, uh, you've, you've talked about that on stage. Yeah, and I was just so funny watching his face turn, and then seeing his handlers be like, "We have to go!" Like, just they got him as far away from me as like. So it was like a, it was going well, which was even worse, kind of like it was going well, <laughs> and then it just I destroyed it with yeah. like my own hubris. So you're the guy at the casino, not to stick with gambling. Uh, metaphors here, Carl. I started pitching nickels, you know? You started pit- you were just like, enough of this penny. Yeah. Went big time. Yeah. Yeah. But that, you know, when you're, it's like, that's what keeps casinos in business, what happened to you, just where you're greedy. just like, you're winning, you're winning, 
And then there's just that point when you just see those pr- people eating at like the 24 hour deli at the casino, yeah. and, like by yeah. themselves. I, I ended up at the the metaphorical Sabaros in that <laughs> Billboard <laughs> Music Award <laughs> casino, which was in the MGM Grand Casino in yeah. Las Vegas. There was a Sabaros there. Yeah, yeah, they might want to. I guess, but that's who's showing up at casinos. It's like every once in a while, George Clooney talks about how he's just like. I want to open a casino that's like classy the way casinos used to be and everybody's got to dress up. It's like, well, get ready for your casino to go out of business right. in 12 yeah. hours. It will be bankrupt. Because Las Vegas is just people in sweatpants drinking flip, daiquiris. Yeah, like, flip flops. That's all it is. Yeah, get ready. Also, yeah. back then, didn't everyone just dress up for everything? Casinos were probably still garbage. Right. Yeah. Just everyone wore a suit everywhere. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Every, people wore, like, flying. They would be, like... Three pieces. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine that now? It's like now you're lucky if in your row you're not sitting next to somebody in pajamas at like any hour of the day. We're just those people at airports who show up. Citizens arrest. Like you were talking about that. Like yeah. anytime someone takes off their shoes and socks on an airplane, I want to like detain them. Like yeah. that should be illegal. You, it's 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 out, it's out of bounds. To, to, to just those inflatable pillows too they should be illegal because people deflate them after you know when you're on your way down and they smell like bad breath yeah. and they're just so foul those pillows <laughs> guys are making me feel bad because I did I still do everything you listed uh-huh yeah. <laughs> when you go to the airport mm-hmm. Carl mm-hmm. I'm gonna just th- throw this guess out okay. here sure when you're going through security right you're the guy who First of all, I complain that I have to go through it. I make a big deal about that. And you look all around. Yep. Yes. Like yep. you try to like you're trying to get everybody on your side. Yeah. Yep. Like, can you guys believe yep. this? You yep. do a lot of that. Yeah. Yep. A lot of posturing. Yeah. But then well, I'm dressed as a serviceman too. Oh. <laughs> and are you a serviceman? Oh God, no. No. So you you dress like you're in the military. The Navy. At the uh, airport. An admiral. So you can get respect. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I deserve the respect, don't I? <laughs> but you're not actually. You've never served oh, in the military. Oh, God, mil- no. 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 But you certainly, you go around acting like you're in the military. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually give orders to the the, uh, the security people. As if the TSA is like yeah, uh, ranked Under beneath, my authority, yeah, yeah. Like they rank beneath yeah. you as a Navy mm-hmm. man. Yeah. On, on land, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It works maybe half the time. Uh-huh. I'm still betting, though, even in your Admiral thing, you probably don't wear socks with your shoes. Oh, no. And then you have to, like... Well, I don't wear shoes, Tom. You have, oh, so you go to the airport bare... Flip-flops. Bare, in flip-flops. And then you have to, like, put your flip-flops on in the little basket. Mm-hmm. Does anybody... Like that barefoot thing when people, like, go to the airport and they're only wearing shoes but no socks, and then suddenly you see them walking in bare feet... Like where thousands of people are walking every day, doesn't that just seem like? It sounds like it's like outbreak. It's like you're looking to get, to get like, which one's outbreak again? That's the which one was the Dustin Steven Soderbergh Hoffman. movie? That's contagion. contagion. Yeah. yeah, that's contagion territory. I saw contagion in IMAX. <laughs> it was. I don't know who decided that that should be an IMAX movie. Same guy who decided Focus should be an IMAX movie. That must just be these like things are just like it's late February. I don't know. We got to get something in the IMAX. Can we put the Hobbit thing back in there again? Does anybody? No, we've had that for three months. Can we trick anyone? Maybe add five minutes of new Hobbit footage. No, they're not going to fall for that. Uh, what Will Smith? Will Smith? But can we make that IMAX IMAX movie? So you're seeing like a. Uh, like a crime caper, which seems like it stars like five people in it. I've seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross in IMAX. I actually would want to see that though, right? 3D. What if they? What if they just went back through 25th anniversary? Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, IMAX 3D. That scene where he's uh, talking to his secretary Grace on the phone, asking mm-hmm. for first class tickets. Mm-hmm. Imagine seeing that in. The, in, in- you mean full, full uh, IMAX experience? Jack Jack, uh, Jack Lemon? Yeah. Uh, Grace, give me a first class ticket. Is this your Jack Lemon impression? Yeah, isn't Carl? It, it's perfect, right? It sounds like you're doing Conan O'Brien's impression of people <laughs> from old timey movies. No. Mash, eh? Like you're almost, yeah. you almost say that. I don't think Jack Lemon. Sure, he did. 
He, say, he didn't say meh. Yeah, shit. great. Uh, give me some, some of those first pass tickets, see? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, he, he says see all the time in, in uh, what's it, Save the Tiger? It's, wow, you're really. Yeah, I know my film. You know your Jack Lemon movies. Yeah, I know film. You know film. Student so you, of film. You're a student of film. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Like, what's the last, what's the last great movie you saw? Uh, well, I watched it the other night. What's that? That's great movie. It's it's got the greatest film line of all time in it. What's that? What's the line or the film? What's the line? We'll line. see if we can guess the okay. line, the film okay. based on the line. We like to send out a mailer. Yeah, that's uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's Brian Doyle Murray's like one of his two lines in National Lampoon's Vacation. What's he eating when he says that line? Is he eating like watermelon? Yeah. 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 He's eating watermelon and he says, that might be my favorite scene in movies. Just the idea. Has everything. The watermelon. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> he goes into the, because Chevy Chase goes into the place and mm-hmm. he's like. It's a campground. A campground. And he's like, <laughs> like, man, we need you just fill out your name and address on this thing. And then Chevy Chase is like, why do I have to put down my address? And in mid bite. Brian Doyle Marie says, we like to send out a mailer. <laughs> oh, God. Movies? Anybody? Have you seen any movies lately? Carl, you saw National Lampoon's Vacation yep. recently. Yep. Right, I'm going to put another one of these questions out. What's the dumbest purchase you've ever made, Joe Mandy? Um, I used to have a problem of... Uh like late at night, bu- buying things on eBay that I forgot later that I purchased. And one mm-hmm. was um, authentic Boston Celtics tearaway pants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they were game worn. Yeah, G- very expensive. They didn't have pockets and they did not fit, so I couldn't wear them. And they didn't. And when I did, they did. and and you are not a Boston no, Celtics fan. No, <laughs> you're a you're a Timberwolves. Fan. Yeah, it was very weird. Gabe. And. In junior high, I went on a class trip to New York, and it was like the height of Hard Rock Cafe, and I bought like a $100 Hard Rock Cafe jean jacket, <laughs> and then like like was sweating during uh-huh. dinner, because it was probably like the biggest purchase I'd ever made, and returned it, but like the idea of like a 14-year-old being like, I have to return, oh. <laughs> I have to return yeah. my jean jacket. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dripping wet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> soaking wet. Lisa Jane Persky. Moravian Festival cookies. You bought them. Okay. <laughs> that was the okay. They're good though. You you didn't So you Carl's know. saying those are not the worst purchase. He disagrees. Yeah, yeah. That's not the dumbest purchase. Yeah. Carl, dumbest purchase? George Washington. Wait, what's that? George Washington. I can't I can't hear you. George Washington's head. What what do you mean, George Washington's? How did when you say George Washington? We don't need to get into this, please. <laughs> Wait, it was when you say head, mm-hmm. like his skull, actual head. No, well, head with flesh on it still. It's See, still that should have been that should have been the red flag that it wasn't real. All, it was all authentic. Yeah, It'd be not because he died three hundred years ago. Yeah, and it would still have flesh on it. I just thought because he was a president that maybe he had some sort of holy powers <laughs> that, that kept his, his, his skin taut mm-hmm. <laughs> and his wig powdered. Where did you buy this? What's that? My nephew. <laughs> Your nephew. Sold it to me. One of the ones you pitch pennies yeah. against. Wow. You. So you really. And how much did you pay for it? $10,000. What's that? $10,000. Well, what, what, what actually was it, though? It was paper mache. <laughs> it was a paper mache. Yeah. How long did you go before knowing it was not real? Stop mumbling. Seven I'm months. I'm only going to ask you to say it louder. Seven months. I took it on a tour. <laughs> you took it. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you got exposed. Yes. Oh, that Carl. This is, you're not acquitting yourself well Ooh, here with look. these things. You don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I I'm judge just, you. You're, well, you're, I, I, you can make a case you're judging yourself mm. with these things. Did I tell you guys about the Hollywood salad at... <laughs> Muscle Maker Grill, they have something called Hollywood Salad. <laughs> Grilled chicken breast and turkey bacon with reduced fat cheddar cheese, tomatoes, onions, and our zero-carb signature sauce over a bed of romaine lettuce. See, I thought carbs were good for bodybuilders, no? 
uh, carbs uh, carbs are good before an event, right? Mm. Isn't don't people carb up before they run, right? right before the Oscars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah before they uh, before the Oscars, they're eating a lot of cookies yeah. and yeah, yeah. and like pastries. It's why they have that pastry table on the red carpet. You always see it, where just like you see, yeah. like Jennifer Lawrence eating a uh, like a, a strudel. Yeah. Or something. Hey, Joe Mandy's saying we go. He's, you're going to split. Thank you, Joe. Go. I have to. Yeah, that, I'm no, just no, too no. hungry. No, so. of course. <laughs> the, the muscle maker. Thank you for coming, Joe. Yes, really thank appreciate you. it. Bye, Thanks, guys. Buddy. Bye, Joe. Bye. Thank you so much. Let's see here. Next question. If you were on the run, where would you hide, Gabe? My dad's house. Your dad's house. Yeah. My dad's okay. house. Uh, haven't been there in a very long time. Look, it's a long story. But okay. Last place. Last place they'd look. It's so it's the last place you'd be like. Yeah, he doesn't go there. Yeah, he doesn't. He's he's not definitely going. not there. He doesn't go. He doesn't go to his dad's mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. like that. Sure. So, should, we a cha- should we even check? Should we even check? Yeah, that's a. I'm sorry. <laughs> look. Should we check his dad's house? Nah. Now we talk to a couple people. There's no way he's at his dad's place. Like, and if he's at his dad's place, he deserves to get away with this. Mm-hmm. If he went to those, <laughs> if he went to those lengths. Look, it's a bummer. Yeah, let him. Let's let him go. Lisa Jane Persky, where would you hide? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, very secretive person, and I don't. I'm not. You know, why would I tell you? See, but that's exactly. You were the first person to not. That's been the whole trick with that question. I've been asking it to, for people for a month. You're the first person to answer it correctly. Where? You're supposed to say, I'm not going to tell you where I'd hide. No, I can't. Because then, then everybody knows where you'd hide. Congratulations. Thank you. Do I win That's a prize? That's like Willy Wonka level, right? Golden ticket? That Anything? should get you the chocolate factory. <laughs> and then you can hide in the chocolate factory. Well, see, now Gabe just exposed the thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got to take the chocolate factory from you. Carl, is there any, if you were on the run, where would you hide? Space. Space? Yeah. Uh-huh. When you say space, you mean the sky, the sky. So like, or like the outer atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I I don't know how you'd hide there. I mean, do you have access to like crafts that would take you up? I didn't think of that. Yeah, you might want to. Think- All right, okay, I'll change it. Okay, the ocean. <laughs> like the ocean, you mean like not not. You're. I'm. I'm sure there's no way you're saying. Exactly what you just said first before, but for instead of going up in space, you're gonna, you're thinking you'll go down into the ocean. Yes, yeah. Oh, oh, so you you are. I would just be in the ocean. Yeah. Uh, like how deep in the ocean? How many, what's that movie? Twenty leagues. Two thousand twenty thousand leagues. Yeah. Well, whatever that was. Yeah, so you would go that, be that deep. So your plan is to hide mm-hmm. twenty thousand leagues mm-hmm. beneath the sea. Yeah. And only because you know that as a movie I, title. That's the only the only depth level I know. It's twenty thousand yeah. leagues. So I just I just just go down that far. So you'll just get in some sort of. Maybe that's the only depth there is. Some sort of. of oh, well, I, you could probably figure that there's one through nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine leagues. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, they probably don't measure them in twenty thousand league increments. Because then you're saying there's either 20,000 leagues or 40,000 leagues. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How deep is a league? How far is that? Quarter mile? Is it a quarter of anybody? Leagues? I'm sure that's that's right. There's no way to look it up, yeah. but I yeah. think a quarter mile quarter is mile. Right. Let's go with that. We'll go with that? Yeah. 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 We'll go with, okay. Where would you hide? I think you know everything. I would just move from town to town like like Bruce Banner. Or Guy Fieri. Or Guy Fieri. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guy Fieri leaving the town. Boom, dun, dun, dun. That sad piano music at the end of the Hulk. <laughs> with Guy Fieri leaving with a satchel with donkey sauce and some... His jeans and tatters. <laughs> his tattered... He would have his... His tattered jeans, some sort with of like flames with flame, his, <laughs> his flame pocketed torn jeans. Yes, his flame pocketed torn jeans. His his uh, he would probably have some sort of s- special iPod filled with just Smash Mouth songs, 
Because he's tight with the dude from Smash Mouth. They wrote a cookbook together. He doesn't look like he'd be. He looks exactly. <laughs> he looks like he is. He looks like he, like they could be brothers. S is it S S K in Smash Mouth? I are, you, are you thinking of Pavement? The band? The guy no, pavement. no. That would be pretty awesome though if the guy from Smash Mouth. Same guy he might be jammed. Well, they look a little different. Well, it uh, exact same music. It's the exact same music. Oh, Carl. What are you in doing in, Lo- in Los Angeles anyway? Oh, I, I had to get out of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. W- why, what led you to coming to the other end of the country? I just heard that there were there were a lot of cool soundboards out here that needed, uh, needed need, tweaking. Needed to be worked on. Mm-hmm. Hardly any fudge in the faders out here. I guess that's just yeah. a New Jersey thing. Um, I, 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 look, I don't appreciate the... There's a there's an ac- accusatory there's a quality little, to it. Uh, a little tinge to my to your voice. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're you're clearly inferring that I'm the one who smeared all the fudge all over the place. That's look if this if the if the fudge fits. Mm-hmm. If smear away is that a saying? That's not an actual saying. I think it's a song, isn't it? If the fudge fits, it's, it's a Sinatra song. It's so, almost positive. So Sinatra had a song called "If the Fudge Fits, yeah. Smear Away." Yeah. If the fudge fits, baby, smear away. What era was this? Like L.A. is my lady. Like when he's she wearing shot the... me. Down. It's it's on. She shot me down. Okay, not when he's wearing the members only jacket on the yeah. cover. Of... Yeah, yeah. Is that isn't it amazing that Frank Sinatra got to a point where he wore a members only jacket? <laughs> On the cover of one of his albums, that just like that's what members of before like the whole members only thing came came like what are you a member of like I don't want to be a member of that club the shoulder hook club <laughs> those are the casino people you're talking about now the members you just on- sort of change with the uh, times like the people in the you know <laughs> the shoeless people in the pajamas in the yeah. casino yeah he so even Sinatra. Loosened up his standards and put on a members only jacket every once in a while. Yeah. I can't wear the tux all the time. I like to relax in this shiny members only jacket. Sammy told me about these cool jackets. Did you ever hear the thing when he, when like they did Cannonball Run and then like Sam, Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin did Cannonball Run and then Sinatra was like, Hey, why don't you guys ever invite me to be one of these cannonball pictures? And then, so they put him in Cannonball Run 2, but I don't think he got out of the car. I think, like, a car pulls up and the window goes down. Like, it's like, well, are you in the movie? Like, don't ask to be in the movie if you're only going to shoot a scene from your car. Maybe he <laughs> lost his pants that day. I would hope that someone on the set, like either Hal Needham, the director, right. um, or you know Burt Reynolds or Dom DeLuise or you know Jamie Farr, could have come up with some kind of pants for him to wear that mm-hmm. day. That was the second Cannonball Run movie. I don't think uh, I don't think it was as good as the first one. The first one sequels are always as good. See, they are always. And you're saying this as a film. Oh yeah, you're a film buff. Yeah, Rocky II, the return of the girl who took off her glasses and let her hair down and was instantly hot. That's not well. You're ro- the Rocky. Movie, it's called Rocky. Right. Colon. No, pretty I sure there was no colon after the. Mm. So you think it was the first Rocky movie was called Rocky colon, colon. the girl. Who took off her glasses and let her hair down and was instantly hot? That that's the t- that's, the that's first not one. the title of the first. The second Rocky. one was the return of the girl. Oh, so so these Rocky movies seem to be focusing more on Adrian than Rocky. No. I, are you sure you? I'm taking you to film school. This is this is. Uh, I'm gonna. I might. I might uh, question this. Right, this. Well, it's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. I'm. I might. I might. Uh, I'm gonna have to call uh, Carl yeah. Weathers. No, I would call. I would Bert, love to. Burt Young. <laughs> Burt Young. That'd be great if uh, you think he'd weigh in on. He might. On which one would be which? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. 
The Best Show is produced in partnership with the Forever Dog Podcast Network. The show is hosted by Tom Sharpling and features John Worcester, Michael Lisk, Jason Gore, and Pat Byrne. The show is produced and written by Jason Gore, Pat Byrne, Michael Lisk, Brett Davis, John Worcester, and Tom Sharpling. The Best Show is executive produced by Tom Sharpling, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Co-executive produced by Jason Gore and Pat Burns, segment producer Michael Lisk. The show is engineered and mastered by Andrew Gleason and Wesley Knapp. Graphic design, video editing, and social media by Brett Davis. Website and technical support by Martine Sellis. And the show is recorded at Forever Dog Studios in Los Angeles. Support The Best Show on Patreon over at patreon.com slash thebestshow. And follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Best Show for Life. That's Best Show number four, Life. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.